as you're working in projects in Audio Evolution Mobile, sometimes things can get really complicated. But fortunately, there's lots of tools in here to help you manage things and move around and get things done. And uh, I'm going to show you those in this video. My favorite feature is the Snap to Grid. Uh, let me turn off the grid so you can see what this is doing. Uh, if I'm in edit mode and I'm moving around clips, I can just kind of move these around all over the place. And if I zoom in, you'll see that this isn't actually lining up on a bar or anything. It's just kind of floating there. But if I turn on the Snap to Grid, it's now snapping to the bars because I have set specifically to snap to a bar. I can set it to a beat and now it'll move around on the beat. But I find it really helpful to be in uh, display and snap to grid with a one bar grid size. And then it's super easy to just move things around and keep everything lined up. And you'll probably have noticed that I use two fingers to do a horizontal pinch to zoom the uh, uh, timeline. You can also do a vertical pinch to shrink the tracks. And this is really helpful, but um, as you're in edit mode and you're, you're doing this, you're running around, you're grabbing things, you could sometimes when, when you're you know scrolling around, you could actually grab a clip and start moving that around. So it, it is, if you're in scroll mode, this doesn't happen. You can't, you can grab on anything and it will move around, but it, it's helpful to get used to using this uh, uh, preview down at the bottom and you can just scroll around without, um, you know, it, if you're in edit mode, you're not going to accidentally move around a clip. It's important to keep in mind that when you're doing this, uh, your uh, playhead up here at the top is moving around with you. Uh, it's not a problem. You just need to be aware of that because uh, now if you hit the play from there, it's going to be wherever that ended up. So you, you want to keep that in mind. And in the edit mode, we've got a lot of interesting options. So we could, for instance, uh, decide that uh, we want to add in a fade in here or a fade out here or we could decide to change the, the shape of a clip altogether by saying you know let's take out the first two bars so I'm just gonna drag that in and now it's taking out the or the first bar rather and uh, now I'm gonna take out the last bar and now I can move it around you know and it, it's as simple as that now I've just in a few swipes I've just dramatically changed this to now give me a a fade in on the melody and a fade out on the drums and then everything comes crashing in. We can also alter the relative volume of tracks. So let's say that I don't like this particular track. I think it's too loud. If I grab the center piece here, I can drag it down and you see that the, when I'm moving this, the two points on the left and right are also moving down. So now if I add a fade in on this, it's going to come up to this new maximum volume level. So now this whole clip is going to be a little bit quieter. If we swap back into scroll mode, we have some uh, different options when I'm clicking on things. So the all the dots and stuff disappear. I, I can no longer uh, move clips. I can't shrink clips, but I get new and different options that are useful here. So if I long press on a clip, I get options for that. I can cut it. I can copy it. I can apply effects to it. Let's time stretch this and tell it to stretch that out and double it up. Uh, you, you get all kinds of different options like that. But if you long press on an empty part of a track, you get track options. So you can remove a track altogether, rename it or duplicate it. And you know, that's, that's can be really handy. So what do you do on tracks like track one here? If you notice this whole track is full, we can't see an empty part. Well, if you long hold on the clip, we get the clip menu, and at the very bottom of the clip menu is track options. And here we've got the duplicate, remove, rename, and all that. And next to the edit function, we have the split, which can do some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, we could decide that uh, I don't like this fourth bar in this clip right here, so if I hit there, I've just sliced that. Now if I swap back into edit, I can grab this, and like, maybe I can move it around or just... Uh, remove it all together or with the split tool I could do things like say um, this clip right here I want to add a, a break in the middle of it so I I'm now split it I swap into edit and I've added a, a gap between 
what was one clip, now it's two smaller clips. And while I'm in edit mode, I want to show you a multi-selection. This is another really helpful tool here for managing lots and lots of clips. You can say, all right, I'm explicitly trying to select multiple things now. So as when you've got that button pressed, it's going to give you a, a thing here where you can pick stuff. And now I've picked three different things and now I can move them around together. This can be really handy. And lastly, we have range, which lets us do some unique things where we can like speci specify a, like a small section of a clip that we want to do something to. So let's say I want to grab the first uh, few bars of this clip. I just drag across it. And now I've got this special range selection thing here. So I could uh, just copy it using the top here. And now I could paste that somewhere. Let me move my bar here and paste. And you notice I had to move the playhead just to tell it where I wanted that to happen when I was using these buttons. You, you could also do it uh, a, a different way. Let me show you that uh, if I, um, oops, I'm still in range. So let me uh, grab a range that's going to include both of these clips. Now, if I um, press on this, just a single tap brings up this thing where I can now say, uh, copy this range. And now I can uh, tell it where I want it to go. Once again, you, just using a, a finger tap, I tap anywhere. Or I guess I hold. <laughs> and now I can paste it in there. And because I've got it locking the grid, it, it did a nice job of putting that right up against the other clips that were already there. Range has also got a, a helpful tool here. Let me select another selection where uh, you see we get uh, uh, range and loop markers. So if I want to set the loop markers to the range. Now when I hit uh, play, it's going to play these last couple of bars and go right back to the beginning of this. And that is a really handy thing for when you're working on a specific section of a larger song and you want to really make sure you're getting that tight. You can just set a, a loop easily with the the range selection and say, this is exactly where I want to be working on this. And now you can get right to work. It, if you decide that you want to change that though, you can do that really easily. You just drag these around and you will be seeing me doing a lot of that in later parts of this series because loops are just super handy. So just tell it where you want it to end and tell it where you want it to begin and it, it'll just follow along. There's another type of marker in here that uh, uh, can be quite handy. Um, oh, uh, uh, to get rid of loops, just hit the loop button and it's gone. Um, or you can bring it back. But uh, another really helpful marker in here, uh, if you hold down on the timeline, you see we get uh, the option to uh, add a marker. And let's say that this is my uh, bridge. And we're not seeing anything because it's actually underneath the, the playhead. If I tap anywhere, it moves the playhead. And you see now I've got this marker here. Um, I call this the bridge. And now I'm going to add another marker. Uh, I call this out. And once again, it's underneath the playhead. Uh, you don't have to move the playhead. If you just drag your finger now, you'll automatically be dragging the uh, new marker. And if you decide that you, you're not liking this or, or something, and you want to change your markers, you want to delete them, whatever, you can jump to them or remove them. Uh, so let's remove bridge. And you see it's now renumbered out as one. 